Speaking of Barry Helwani, Becky Lynch was on his show promoting her book, and she claimed that she has two months left on her contract, although she did pretty much say... Very not, likely, I'm not going anywhere. She's not going anywhere, though, yeah. or, or mo- very likely. I mean, you ne- you never say 100, percent but she's going to get a big, you know, she'll she'll get a, a big big uh, number. I mean, the last contract she got a big number. She'll probably get a bigger one this time. Um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, her deal's not up. Um, I mean, her deal is is coming up. Roll- I think Rollins's deal is coming up. McIntyre's deal is essentially going to be up at WrestleMania. Um, but I don't expect any of them to leave. Um, you know, the fact McIntyre hasn't signed. Um, I mean, I was checking with people and it's like, look, you know, the belief is that he knows what the situation is. And, you know, he's already promoting uh, feuds for, the you know, the summer and the fall. So he's I don't think he's planning on going anywhere. And the, the thing with him with the contract, um, I mean, the, 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 the thing that he was looking for months ago when, you know, it was the contract was running out and he wasn't in a rush to sign was number one. He thought that, um, he wanted to do this new character. And if the new character was, you know, didn't work out in the booking and the booking wasn't strong and everything like that, you know, the idea was maybe, maybe go back and spend time with the family and take time off. And, uh, that was among the thoughts um, obviously, with the character got off, got over great. And the other aspect of the character getting over great is, is that by doing so and not signing, the feeling is is that uh, his price should be higher because he's a much bigger star and he's got big programs to come back to than was the situation six months ago. So we'll see how that all works out. But uh, I would feel that his his not signing and gambling. Uh, I, I would kind of say couldn't have turned out better, but certainly uh, turned out good. It's the update on Braun Breaker. It's not really an update, but um, I got some stuff from um, the 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 thing when they did that thing on on uh, the Friday SmackDown show, and they gave those numbers and everything like that. And those numbers, it's like he may have done those numbers um, at some point in his life. Um, I they were the end, you know they were talking about things that you would do in the NFL Combine, and the numbers they did in the NFL Combine were not too far from those numbers, but they were not those numbers. You know, um, the uh, the 40 speed that he did at the Combine um, was 4.48, not 4.37, which is actually a, a somewhat significant difference. Um, the, uh, the bench... I didn't think it was much of a difference. You know, he did, he did. You know, his combine numbers were were excellent. You know, though the deal was with him as a football player was, you know, he didn't play against top college competition, so that was a question. Um, and you know, there were just some football issues. He actually had a pretty good se- senior year. He was second team All Conference, but. Um, the feeling was is that as a fullback, you know, fullback's not that prominent a position anymore, and they didn't think that he was a good short uh, short yardage runner, which a football NFL football player is best to be. His size, while not too bad for an NFL fullback, was he was on the smaller side, so those things worked against him. But I mean, as far as uh, athletic numbers, you know, I mean his. When he did, he did 35 reps on the bench at the combine at 225, which is uh, very impressive. It was the third best of anyone in the combine and the best among all running backs. Um, his speed was was good. His movement was good. His jump was good. Um, you know, all of his marks were very very high, but he didn't get drafted. Uh, one person had had written in the thing that that uh, to me that. If he, you know, he he came into college football as a linebacker and got switched to running back because of the height situation. They, it was kind of felt he was uh, maybe too short to be an NFL linebacker. But they said that if he had been a linebacker and he'd put up these numbers, that teams probably would have given him a look just because there's a lot of linebackers and that that athletic ability really is something that you take a chance on. And but he wasn't, and at, at fullback it just wasn't uh, just wasn't there for him. And also he came out, 
he came out during COVID and, and for undrafted free agents that didn't have a big name, um, they weren't giving a lot of, you know, NFL teams that season were not giving a lot of looks. They were not, they didn't play preseason, you know, as far as games went. Um, they did less drills than in other seasons. So it was a tough year to come out. And the reality is, is that his prospects of, as an NFL player, he was not considered um, a top prospect, you know, even with the great athletic ability they had. And, um, you know, he's going to do a lot better in pro wrestling than, uh, than you know, he, he, he went to the Ravens camp got cut relatively early, uh, did not try to stick around, you know, went to WWE, which is probably the best thing for him. In the long run, it's it's going to be the best thing for him. So, uh, but, but you know, he, you know, his, his athletic numbers are, you know, very high percentile among uh, football players, you know, coming out of college. We were talking on Monday about the upcoming convention in Las Vegas, and the next day, AW, actually today, did announce today. that uh, Double or Nothing is going to Las Vegas, May 26th, MGM Grand Garden Arena. It is a yeah, Sunday night. Saturday and Sunday, right? Yeah. Well, Sunday night is the pay-per-view. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's official. That'll be following the Dynasty show, which is April 21st. And they also announced a couple of different uh, ways to view the show. Uh, I, of course, had major issues with BR Live on the last pay-per-view. Bleacher Report. Uh, BR yeah. Live doesn't, doesn't exist Well, Bleacher anymore. Report. But anyway, the point yeah. is they have now added uh, Fight TV as well as YouTube and pay-per-view.com. PPV.com, yeah. So you will have uh, multiple ways to uh, buy the shows from here on out and not have to rely on BR. Yeah. Um, good news, I would say. I mean, it's good news that you got more options. I mean, um, it's interesting because, in theory, these other places should be promoting the show, and with more options, it should help the numbers. I mean, we'll see. This pay-per-view is interesting, you know, because to me it's like, um, you know, the, the main event in December was, was MJF and Samoa Joe. And they did over 140,000 buys, and it was um, very successful, more successful than expected. Um, this one, you know, December 30th is not a great date for pay-per-view, um, I don't think, you know, because of the weekend and the competition and all of that stuff. This one, April 21st, um, not, not nearly the competition, um, and, um, you know, the... Um, um, you know, um, as far as so, so you're basically swapping Swerve with MJF, and you got a better semi with Danielson and Will Ospreay. So, um, I mean, no, you don't have that, uh, the end of that, uh, you know, devil angle, which, you know, even though a lot of people didn't like it, it probably helped the pay per view number a significant amount. So, we'll see how it does, but, um, you know, if if Swerve is at the level of MJF, then then the pay per view number should be pretty close to what they did for um, for you know the uh, the end of the year show, the World's End show. So we'll see how that goes. It's a real it's a real test of Swerve. You know, in his first time as a single headliner because the last one, yes, he was in the championship match, but everyone knew that that buy rate, which was next, which was kind of excellent. Um, Without, that by Ray was drawn by Sting. So um, it's going to be interesting. I mean, the one thing, when they announced Willow and uh, Julia Hart tonight, that kind of, like, confused me because, you know, Mercedes had been talking about Willow over and over again, and it's like... You don't know where this is going? This is This is patently obvious to me. What, that Mercedes goes with Willow for... Um, Willow ends up winning the title from Julia. And then she And then Mercedes her. beats Willow for the title to get her win back in her championship match and her title. In Vegas. I presume Vegas, yeah. So much about Rock this week. So I decided a good match for Rock would be uh, Cold Stone. Strap him on. Corner post must have done damage. And Stone Cold kicked... The Rock out of the ring. Shane, Shane was rooting for Rock. A closed line him while down. Rock put his arm out across Stone Cold. It was just a massive infusion. 
Stone Cold won the match. <laughs> cool. Can you verify we did not use AI to replace Granny? <laughs> yeah. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.